A30-2s. Here we are in the final, final thing we've got to do in this unit. And what we're going to look at here in rational functions is applications, or as some people call them, word problems. Now, these aren't overly difficult, but there's definitely a couple things we want to go through, right? So the first type of question we're going to cover is the one we see the most in 30-2, which is this type of question. So what I want you to do is I want you to give this a read. It's a distance speed time question. And I would like you to think about what would go in these four boxes. Okay, you hit pause and try to think about that. Okay, you'll see how you did. Well, it says both cyclists went 100 kilometers and cyclist two is five times faster than cyclist one. Okay, so cyclist one has a broken leg or riding a tricycle or something, I don't know. Okay, now you should always be able to fill in those four right off the bat. Now, where the important information is going to come from is time. So what I need you to remember off to the side here is time is distance divided by speed. So time for cyclist one is 100 over X. Time for cyclist two is 100 over 5X. Then what we have is this cyclist two arrives two hours earlier. Okay, I'm going to worry about that in a second. Let's start making an equation. Well, an equation means that these are equal to each other. So I set them equal to each other. Cyclist two is equal to cyclist one, but they're not equal to each other because it says cyclist two arrives two hours earlier. So what do I do with that two? So here's what I like to say. I just like to make up a random time off to the side. What if it took um, cyclist two, let's just say 10 hours, I'm just making it up. Well, it would take then cyclist one, two more hours, right? they would arrive 12 hours. Well, what is that? That's really 10 plus two, right? So how do I make this equal to each other? Well, that means I would need for these 12 to equal 10, I would need to subtract, subtract two from one of the two sides. Well, what side am I gonna subtract from? From the longer side, right? Now those, this is an equation. Now the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. Okay, but let's try this again. So I'm going to set the two times equal to each other. And now I say to myself, okay, but wait a minute. Cyclist two arrived two hours earlier. So I could have also have added two to that side. And guess what? Now the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. Okay, so there's our equation we can work with. But hold on, there's more. There's a third equation I could make. And what I want you to recognize is these equations are all the same. They're just rearrangements of one another. What if I did this? What if I said time of cyclist one minus the time of cyclist two? Well, what would that give me? Well, 12 hours minus 10 hours is, there's that two hours again. So look at that. There's three equations that we could see in a multiple choice question. Any of those three are correct. So what, again, what I like to do is I just like to make up a time off to the side and then think about how I adjust my equations from my actual question to give me the equation I need. Now, what does it say? It says complete the chart, done. Write the equation. Yeah, we wrote three equations, we're awesome. Okay, restrictions. Well, restrictions are this. This is speed, X is speed. Well, what I know if I'm riding my bike, I have to be faster than zero because this is speed. So my restriction for this question is X has to be greater than zero. There's my restriction. So three different equations you could have written or any one, you just need one really, and then you need your restrictions. Okay, let's try another distance speed time question. Okay, so the difference on this question is the charts filled in. So there's two types of questions we're gonna get. One where you have to just make the equation and where the chart's filled in and one where we actually have to solve. So Melanie drove 404 kilometers and Heidi drove 364. Melanie drove 10 kilometers faster. So I want to notice here, okay, there's my speed of Melanie. What they, whoever set this question up said, okay, Heidi was going 10 slower. So that's why there's X minus 10. And now we need to make our equation from our time box. Okay, 
So how do we make our equation? Well, up here it says in the same amount of time. Oh, okay, that's good news because now same amount of time, this is a little easier. They're going to simply be equal to each other. So now we're back to where we were in the last video. Let's get ourselves that common denominator. So I'm going to multiply both sides by x minus 10. X. Okay, once again, I have a common denominator on both sides. That means the numerators are equal. I can now solve, distribute the 404. Now we start to get some really big numbers here, don't we? And that'll happen because we're talking about driving at, you know, probably a fairly fast speed down the highway. Okay, solve, isolate for x, solve for x. So I'm going to subtract over the 364, add the 40, 40, divide both sides by 40. And what does that sound like to me? 110 kilometers an hour. Just like that. Okay, so now, okay, I'm done. Am I done the question? So I box it, I'm happy, I move on. Okay, wait a minute. Let's always make sure of one thing here. Did I actually answer the question? It sounds like a silly thing to ask, but determine Heidi's speed. No, 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 whose speed is this? This is Melanie's speed. We did not answer the question. And this is where students lose a lot of marks on their diploma because they're not actually answering the question. Well, what's Heidi's speed then? Well, Heidi's speed is X minus 10. So Heidi's speed, therefore Heidi's speed, she's going slower, X minus 10, she's going just 100 kilometers per hour. Okay, it sounds silly, but please, can you make sure you actually answer the question? On the diploma, as I do this video, the past couple times we've been asked to find both people's speed. That this is important that you're actually answering the question. Again, sounds silly to say, but I'm not kidding. Okay, restrictions. Well, again, friends, you know, this is speed. So from here, I would say X has to be bigger than zero, but from here, well, minus 10. So I'm gonna say X actually has to be bigger than 10. So my speed at the very least has to be greater than 10. I'll take the more restrictive of the pair. Okay, there's distance speed time. You'll come across those as you're doing your practice. But it's not all about distance speed time. There are other questions. So I want you to give this one a read and let's see what we do. Okay, so Steve's bought this case of cards and we gotta figure out how many cases of cards are in that he bought. Okay, cool. So let's set this thing up. Actually, as I'm writing this, I was just reading that a Wayne Gretzky rookie card from, I think that's 1979, is going to auction for a million dollars. One million dollars. So if you get yourself a case of vintage cards, go check it out. Let's hope Steve gets one here. Okay, so steps. Get a common denominator, so I'm going to multiply this by V over V, this guy by V over 2, V over 2, and don't forget to multiply the right-hand side. Okay, that's probably the number one error I would see here. Again, it's an equation, left-hand side is equal to right-hand side, therefore the numerators are equal. And now, friends, here we are. Now this just turns into a big equation solve. So I'm just going to distribute again. My spidey senses are tingling. It's a negative. So a negative times a negative is a positive. Okay, over here on the right hand side, 10v squared minus 20v. And now just slow down. Like even don't try to do too much at once. Even I, you know, I'm far from perfect, very far from perfect. You know, I make mistakes. So I'm going to try to slow this down. I'm going to bring everything to the right hand side. Take one side equal to zero. So that sounds like minus 130V minus 900V. I notice everything's divisible by 10. So I'm gonna divide everything by 10, just like that. Okay, now what we could do, we have two ways to solve this from here. We can factor this or we can use the quadratic formula. 
both are acceptable algebraic methods to solve. Okay, let's take a second. I want you to pause and let's see if you can think of the two numbers that multiply to negative 90 and add to negative 13. Let's see if we can factor this down. Well, our two numbers, if you found them, would be negative 18 and positive 5. Negative 18, positive 5. So what does that tell us then? Well, that tells us v is equal to 18, v is equal to negative 5. But wait a second. He's, Steve's gone and bought himself some vintage cases of hockey cards. Unless he's just having a dream, he can't have negative 5 cases of cards. That'd be a little weird. So I know that Steve bought 18 cards. Steve bought 18 cases, I should say. Never hurts to write a sentence, right? Okay, well, this is one way to solve it, factoring. But you're saying to yourself, oh boy, I'm not a factoring pro. Well, sometimes neither am I. So the other way we could do this is to use the quadratic formula. Now the quadratic formula is write on our formula sheet. Where are you hiding? Right there. Sorry, I thought it was at the top. It's at the bottom. There it is, right at the bottom. So we always have it. We don't have to memorize it. Okay, I've been doing this for way too long. So of course I have this thing memorized. So there it is. And now all I'm gonna say to myself is coming back to here, I'm gonna say, just gonna write it off to the side here. A is one, B is negative 13, C is negative 90. Okay, so slowly again, just sub in my values. Well, a negative and a negative makes it a positive. B squared, now here's the number, huge mistake students make. Please put that in parentheses because your calculator will tell you otherwise if you don't put those parentheses there. Okay, it'll mess it up for you. Now, don't go right to your calculator. What I want you to do is slowly start simplifying this. Okay, just like that. Well, um, 13 squared sounds like 169 to me, but it's early in the morning, so I'm gonna double check. Sure it is. Plus 360 over two. I'm gonna simplify what's underneath my radical, known as my discriminant. Okay, I'm gonna add those together. 529 over 2. Okay, and now from here, friends, all we need to do is just go, okay, what's the square root of 529? Well, the square root of 529 is 23. It's a perfect square. It won't always be a perfect square. You will know that when it says round to the nearest tenth. So from here, now we have two different answers. We've got the positive one where we add, and we'll have the other one where we subtract, just like that. Well, 13 plus 23 is 36 divided by two is 18. Sure, it better be because that's what we said in the other one. This one here is gonna say negative five. Again, that's our extraneous. Okay, I would like you to cross it off and write it. I noticed I didn't write it right here, so I'm just gonna go write it, extraneous. And look at, lo and behold, we get the same answer. Now, a couple tips. If for some reason you end up with a negative underneath your square root, you done did screw up, okay? And again, where does that screw up usually occur? Right here. If I hadn't put those parentheses there, this would have told me probably the wrong answer. So there's the number one mistake I'll see here. Okay, friends, there is word problems or applications in rationals. Hope that helped. See you next time.